Well, tonight we are tracking snow and pouring rain tonight from yet another storm. Good evening. I'm Madison Wade and I'm Chris Thomas. These are dangerous conditions tonight, and so we have live team coverage throughout the evening. And Luke is in Pollock Pines, where many are still without power during freezing temperatures. Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods will walk us through the critical changes we're seeing right now. But first, ABC 10's Van 2 is live with a look at conditions in Sacramento County. Van. Well, Chris, you know, I was going to say that this isn't the most torrential rain we've seen in recent memory, but it surely is coming down hard and the wind is actually picking it up right now. So I'm doing that thing where you have to hold the umbrella sideways to prevent it from uh, turning inside out. And you know what? This is not the end of it. The conditions are expected to worsen and we are also expected to see rain in the forecast next week. So really all of this, a really busy active start to the season and that's why many municipalities in our region have already opened their sandbagging sites here in Sacramento County. Three of its nine stations are open. This one here is at the county branch center. So after tonight's downpour, you will have a few extra days to prepare for the next round of rain next week. Now we ran into Sacramento's Willie Murphy, who is taking rain preparedness seriously. Now he works logistics delivery and works outdoors, and he also walks everywhere. He takes a light rail to work. So seeing all of this rain, a bit of a love and hate relationship but you can tell that he is most certainly ready. Yeah, I hate the rain. It's cold right now. I'm freezing <laughs> standing here talking to you, but I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm so prepared today because the weather has been all messed up. We actually been, we need the rain. Actually, we've been in a drought. This is California. Thank God. I'm wearing a two-piece suit. It has, um, it has a raincoat and it has a, um, what's this? Overall. You got to love his energy, and I don't know if you noticed, but he was also wearing that reflective safety vest. So, Willie, he's so great, and he's definitely prepared for this weather. And I also want to mention here at this Sacramento County sandbagging site, it is free, and you can also see uh, they also provide these free sandbags and a shovel out here. So, stormready.org is your place to also get storm preparedness tips as we prepare for this very, very busy season. Now, beyond Sacramento County, other municipalities, municipalities, as I mentioned, have also opened their sandbagging sites as well. So you can head over to abc10.com for a list of those sites. Mm -hmm. A good point there, Van. You go in and try and dry out. Want to get over to Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods. I understand you're tracking rain really all the way through Christmas. Right. And so tonight what we're seeing is the weaker of the two storms moving through over the course of this week. But as Van was mentioning, the rain really picking up. What we saw earlier today was just more the light to moderate variety. And we're seeing some pockets of heavier rain just moving through Elk Grove. We had it earlier in the pocket area, had some over towards the airport and Natomas, but all of this due to continue to move through the valley. The other part of this is that war uh, warmer air working in, and so the snow level is actually going up tonight. Earlier today, we had snow in Grass Valley and Forest Hill. Right now, it is rain Georgetown. Now it's rain, and it's almost raining there for Pollock Pines. A very cold rain and slushy snow just up the hill there. Placerville, tonight, it's rain. No more of that low snow. West Point. Kind of a slushy mix as well, and for Arnold right now, it is snow. Jackson's at 39 degrees, Placerville above the freezing mark at 37, right about the freezing mark in Nevada City at 32, and we're at 32 for Truckee and South Lake Tahoe as well. Winds are starting to die down behind that main line of precipitation that we're seeing move through for tonight, but wind gusts still at about 22 to almost 40 miles per hour, with our wind advisory actually now extended through 2 o'clock in the morning with gusts up to about 40 miles per hour. So a few possible light power outages possible through 2 o'clock in the morning. Winter storm warning is going to continue until 10 o'clock tomorrow above 2,000 feet. Wind gusts over the ridges potentially of over 100 miles per hour. And just north of I-80, we've got our winter weather advisory in place as well through 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. All right, Monica, thank you. And up in the Sierra and those icy cold temperatures, many are without power or just trying to stay warm tonight. ABC 10's Luke Clary live in Pollock Pines with the latest Luke. Yes, Madison, and where we're standing here just off Highway 50, you probably can't see much, but some of that hard, heavy, wet snow coming down. Uh, where we're standing in Pollock Pines, we don't have chain controls right here, but we understand that in Kyber, several miles down the road, that is in effect. And again, with this snow coming down, uh, but there's real concerns tonight. 
Real concerns tonight for the many families still without power. As snow falls in the Sierras and rains drench the foothills. Cold. Freezing. The emergency supplies include a trunk full of ice. So I just went grocery shopping, like, you know, right before this all happened. Teacher Christina Roulet Barish arrived at her rural Placerville home just in time to get some of her groceries on ice before dark as she prepares for a third night in a row without power. Very cold. I took every blanket I have in my house and put it on my couch and that's where I'm sleeping with my dog because she's like a little heater. Though she's been receiving text updates from PG&E, she still feels in the dark about why her power has been out for so long. Traffic control on Cold Springs Road said a fallen tree snapped a power pole in half and that workers might need until 7 p.m. Thursday to get it back on. As PG&E data showed dozens of customers without power in Placerville, hundreds more on Highway 50 between Kybers and Twin Bridges. Good evening, this is Luke Clary. I'm We've reached out. So far, no word from PG&E about compensation for those who must endure another night without power. This keeps happening where it's days, weeks without power and groceries go bad and pets die. And tonight we still haven't heard back from PG&E about our you know, answers to our questions, but in data that we just updated about a half an hour ago, we can see that another uh, 72 customers remain without power in Placerville, 670 remain without power in that stretch between Kybers and Twin Bridges. So a very cold night ahead for those still at home and without power. Back it's to you. really a treacherous situation. Our Luke Clary giving us a live look from Placerville tonight. Luke, thanks. Well, you can track the weather anytime on your smart device. Download the ABC 10 app for live radar, your 10-day forecast, and more. It's free for both Apple and Android devices.